Welcome back, friends. It is time for game number four, Eminem versus LFO. Who's taking the L today and who's taking the W? Well, we're going to figure out over the next few uh, minutes. Welcome back to the analyst desk. I'm the medic with me, or Fresh and Fabian. Let's talk about these two. Starting off with Eminem. Seems like they've let that Molotov drop on their feet because... You know what, Milos? Yes. They're extremely consistent, actually. Consistent with being bad. They're not playing good whatsoever. They're making a lot of individual mistakes. I was actually trying to do a segment on them to the, for today that where I was going to look at why are they doing these poor performances? Why are they setting up fail after fail after fail? Because we know their players are good enough. Me and Jack have given them excuse after excuse after excuse because we know the value that they have as players. They haven't shown it whatsoever this stage, even remotely close to it. But I couldn't really go into why they are doing it because I feel like I will go too much on individual mistakes rather than team mistakes. Jack, you know, he's out of line, but he's not wrong. <laughs> he's not wrong. That, I mean, that's the ultimate thing is Eminem, you know, fans, players, staff, all can be watching this and not be happy with what we're saying. But when he's not, Fabian's not wrong when he's saying this. There's players playing like they're scared of being dropped. And there's players playing that we've seen them go through Nationals, go through Challenger League, go through Six Invitational, playing with such a freedom and confidence, and they're just not playing like it in EUL. And that's their big hurdle that they need to overcome. Jack, could you say UK Massive have turned into UK Flaccid? Uh, where have I heard that one before, Fabian? We've heard it right here on this desk. By yeah. Gasan. Okay, whatever. I, I, all I'm going to say, and I need to wait for the camera to scroll right back across over there, or it come on me, because whilst Eminem might not be the best team in the league, that logo, this logo right here, oh, you is the best logo oh, yeah. in the league They're by far. Sure. So that's one thing they do have going for them. I'll that's move my hand out the way. The UK bias <laughs> is so incredibly visible here. Uh, but that's why it's frustrating. Eminem frustrates the life out of me because I know how good they can be. It's the same with everybody. They've come into this league. They've earned their spot in this league. It's time to show they deserve to be here. Speaking of frustration, LFO is usually the team that frustrates everybody <laughs> when it comes to the last stages of a stage, pre-major. But they're so close, so close. They're in the top four. They're looking good. And then they slip out of it. And then it's all gone. And let's just try it again. So right now, they're sitting at nine points. A victory today could be massive for them, Jack. And that's what we're all waiting for, right? We've been here before. We're LFO. We're in the middle of the stage, sitting in the top four. And they drop out. And we had the same things before the stage, during the stage. LFO are unreal. Or Vitality, as they was known then, unreal in scrims. They've actually started showing it in the server, in my opinion. The way that they beat G2 in the very final play day, you could argue that they maybe shouldn't have won in the very final play day, but for a massive performance out of P4. Um, th they've showed they've got some substance about them, and that's what I like. They've brought in Mowgli. He's had a good introduction. P4's been consistent. They've got a bit of a problem with Rise and his individual performances, particularly on the entry, given the roles he plays. But all in all, a good solid squad in third place, looking to solidify their place in the major. The BDS loss will have just helped them as well because they're tied with points on BDS. Yeah, Rice needs to stop dying early. That's basically the way that it is. He, he's not on a roll where he should be dying early, but I can also at the same time understand it to a certain degree because when you're playing this aggressive, free-floating kind of sort of attacks and even to a certain degree with their, their defenses, there is always going to be a risk that players die early. Mm -hmm. And when a player has a lot of confidence, and he trusts in his team, that's the sort of situation that will arise. Yeah. Funnily enough, matches with his name. But it, it's an, I, I think it needs to be a worry for them anyways, because you can't have one player dying that early that often. It can happen every now and then, just as, not as much as it does now. All right, fixing the opening death issue. Then what map are we going to be playing on to kind of take a look at what can go down on it. We're going to go to Villa here. Zelafo had the final say. They'll take Chalet out of play and leave us with a an attack start for themselves on Villa with Eminem having kind of the pick of which side. They'll go for defense. Make sense, Jack? Villa's always an intriguing one because it, it's in this kind of 50-50 kind of state where sometimes we see it and it's so defender-sided and then sometimes we see it and teams make it look very attacker, very easy to attack. I think LFO are going to attack it with pace and, you know, they might not even necessarily run a breacher. So it really does come down to gunfights and that's where Eminem have been struggling, particularly with two or three players that have been underperforming. If they can get their front three players to be the front line constantly, basically holding Nello and Neo off the front line, mm -hmm. I think they can do well for now because those two players are struggling massively. Villa, in its own sense, has quite a lot of choke points when it comes to the end execute of the round. Yeah. So 
if you have your players alive for the end of the round and you stay alive long enough, I think Eminem will probably do all right. I'm not going to say that they're winning because I genuinely don't believe that they're going to win. They need to step up mentally and individually when it comes mechanically. And then they'll stand a chance, but the chance today is slim. That would be a big upset if Eminem defeats LFO, but a great one if LFO were to win, catapults them with three extra points to remain in the top four and heavily in it. A lot of questions to be answered in the game. Fresh Fabian, thank you very much. It's LFO, Eminem, and we got Dez and Big Tim. Take you through it. Enjoy. Big Tim, Big Tim, Big Tim, Big Tim, Big Tim. Hey! Have you got the voice on? Hey! He's back again. Have they left my voice on? Got it on? Go on. Excellent news. Excellent. It gets better and better. <laughs> I'm going to cast for more more often if they're going to give me this I want to see what I was, They gave it to Hap when they were casting earlier. When you're back in here, we'll get you to do the God voice sat next to me. Do you think? Again, Tim. Go on. Well, we're going to go into Eminem versus LFO. It's going to be the UK versus France. It's going to be a big showdown. And we will see who comes out on top in the next hour or so as we go all the way to lovely Tuscany to fight this one out on Villa. Sounds like you're shouting through some hallowed halls, Tim. Absolutely love it. And the hallowed halls of Villa. <laughs> this may well be because it could turn into a burial ground for Eminem unless they've sorted out their issues in the last few days. It has not been the start for the UK massive that they were looking for in EUL. And LFO have been getting hotter as the stage has gone by. Mowgli doing absolute magic for this team. Let's get into operator bands, Tim, and see which operator shall not be joining us here today in Villa. Eminem will take our first attacker, and it's going to be Twitch that goes off the board. Interesting choice there. We've seen some sort of funky bands coming in from Eminem from time to time. You know, every time you say funky bands, a... Lycan's ears start burning. I've been told this is a thing. I'm sure it does. That's going to be another one joining the list. Um, LFO uh, joining the list of people who want to ban away Ying, mm. seeing her ban rate go up slowly. Um, in line with the attacker repick, really, and the surprise shock. factor. And now we're going to move on. Shock. Now we're going to move on to our defenders. Valkyrie, the first, no shot. Not at all. I think the Twitch band's actually a bit of a target band coming in against. I think it's P4 that played it historically. Remember him dropping inside of Oregon Basement, killing three people back on Monday on the Twitch? Yeah, just, just P4 things, just Twitch things, no matter what you want to say about it. Taking it away is going to be a good thing. Ying getting banned away by a number of teams. Eminem banned it on Monday as well. So for LFO to double up on that just again shows, like you said, Tim, the strength we're seeing of it. And the last two bands, Valkyrie Mirror, pretty standard on a map like Villa. Let's get into it then, because it's LFO starting on the attacking side. And for those of you who look at this map and think, well, Villa tends to be attacking sided. Sure, maybe that's a good thing coming into this for Eminem. But attacker repick has thrown a number of things into whack at the minute. We'll see how this first half plays out. But for Eminem, you're looking to get at least a good three rounds on the board here, especially given how the last couple of play days have been going. Going to start things off in Aviator Games for round number one. Then it's going to be Eminem on the defence. And interestingly, they're going to open up all of the study wall there. I don't think we're going to see any reinforcement potentially on that side. Um, so that's an interesting one. It's going to leave it susceptible to a little bit of soft breach potentially. We've got the Rotero drones on the side of Bibu, but there is a mute jammer that we spotted just in behind the wall, round about where users is now. In fact, he's running in and getting that reinforcement in place. That's why I was commenting on it because I thought it was a, a little. Oh, that we wouldn't be seeing that. I thought maybe the mute jammer in behind stopped the Rotero from opening it up, but no, they're going to reinforce that off, and that makes a lot more sense for the setup. I would imagine we're going to see mostly master bedroom sided pressure coming in from LFO, but they're also sending Shinka out towards that study balcony. Absolutely. Let's see then how things square up here because they could just start a couple out on towards the study, as you say. Mowgli has been the go to entry for this team for, well, since the start of the stage, really, and it's really added a bit of bite to their attacks. Where last stage and most of last year, it already came down to P4 being the surprise factor for this team. Now you've got P4, plenty capable of killing two or three people in a round, and the same from Mowgli, who has been pretty scary. Interestingly, has or had before the last play day the lowest survival rate in the entirety of the league. Yep, even ahead of teams that have players on that are getting slaughtered against other opponents. He has one of the lowest survival rates in the league. But I think now that's slightly improved after Monday. We'll see how long he lives through this game. 
Maybe needs to carve himself a, a channel of high risk, high reward and see if he can at least make those deaths count. Now then, Users is hanging on to that Nitro out. It comes onto the frame. It's not going to be able to do any damage to P4, who gets on the opposite side and is able to use the building to block out the damage. Two pushing towards Study at the minute, but Neo needs to be dealt with. The ADS is going to go. Flashes have reined in, but Neo is still in a position on the Jaeger to be able to fight here should Shinka push in along with Rise to Study. They have haven't got themselves established inside there yet. Mowgli is on the window, so everything is shaping up towards Ooh. this study side. There they go. They take the shots onto Neo. Don't find the kill. Solitov does open one up with onto the window, but Rise manages to get himself a double into sight and into the corridor. And main stairs make that three before he's shut down with a big oh, user's double, and the kills are flying right now. It's back and forth, back and forth between the two teams, but ultimately it's Eminem down in the man disadvantage. Tyrant, normally the go-to entry for this team, is the last one left standing against P4 and against Bibu. Knows this one hanging, hanging out in the window just outside here. Must be very careful on the swing as he goes in for it. The second man recovering the diffuser and doing a little bit of drone work. I like this as well from LFO holding one angle. The other's on the drones making sure they can get inside a site because realistically they've got everything to play for. They've got time on their side but oh, Tyrant finding one. Now it gets messy because Bibu is left alone by himself can still look to get the diffuser down but the problem is where is Tyrant going to step in because it's very quiet inside a villa right now now, Tim, he's stepping in towards the side. C4 in hand coming out over the top. Nope, not quite to be the case. And Bibu finds the shot. Down goes Tyron, but my God, was that closer than it had to be. Well played, well played from Bibu there, just using the audio cue of that diffuser going down, just to bait Tyrant into that fight. Tyrant didn't really have a choice. He had to make a move. He had to do something, but on such low health, it was always going to be difficult. I think he was hopeful with the throw of the Nitro that it might remove the need for a gunfight at all. But no, Bibu, his experience comes to the fore there, takes him away from the diffuser, finds that kill, and that was all attention towards study from LFO. I did expect to see a little bit more pressure from the side that we now look at the new site which is statuary and trophy but no nothing really came through there they were happy to just push in numbers into study rise basically opened up the round by getting in there with a big 3k it just made things so difficult for Eminem not only have you lost three players you've lost study you've lost main stairs um you really are going to struggle from that but rise had an absolute field day just chewing his way through the top of main and through study lots of damage being done the 3k at least was finally traded out it did take a while but they get there in the very end, but he'd already done the damage by that point, Tim, and basically won that round for LFO. Up here on the top side of the map, though, we have got Nello bringing along the Clash, an operator that we're used to seeing playing inside of Astro and doing a little bit of contention, uh, contention out towards bathroom, down towards the stairs, just slowing the attack down and really keeping them penned in behind that single doorway in towards the bathroom, wasting a bit of time and with a little bit of support may well help his team find a couple of kills. Very possibly. Immediate progress from LFO. Look at that, Bibu not messing about whatsoever. He's uh, gone straight in. This is a big rush through into Astro. He might just catch them out here. The Clash is wing. there, ready to be challenged. There's one on Astro stairs that he doesn't necessarily know about, but Neo does get down. Oh. People are going to find the kill, but Solitov <laughs> comes in big. Gets not one, not two, but three. Taking down over half of LFO in a fraction of a heartbeat. Shinka, Mowgli, they slam the brakes on as they start to get the drones out and just see what they can find, see what pieces they can pick up from this demolished Well, push. they rolled the dice, Tim, and sadly it landed on a one. It didn't turn out the way they were looking for. Sure, they get a couple of kills in the process, but you've lost three on your charge in. You've lost your nades in the process. Like, your literal three entries are off the board at this point. You've now got Mowgli kind of playing this more supporting role, I guess, even though he's on the Iana. They're trying to piece together an attack, but the problem is you're also facing off against the Clash still. That wasn't dealt with in the rush and was the primary target. It's what they've been charged in looking for, but simply couldn't pick him up. Solotov doing loads of damage from the top side of statuary there. Mogul is going to just take a second, take a breath, get onto that Gemini clone and send it in. Shinker on the drone as well. So this is all about information right now for LFO. The thing is, the one thing they've got in abundance is time. They don't need to rush this. A minute and a half to go. Nade is going to be unsuccessful one. as Mowgli just launches it across. As you say, it was his last ditch effort and he's not going to find any damage with it so there's nothing for it but to take gunfight. Tyrant's ready. Plants his feet and finds the kill. Shinker sends over the flashbang but it's going to be like throwing 
a stone into the ocean des as there's just absolutely nothing that he can do shinka shut down as he moves in that's going to be the final kill coming across from trophy and that is the first round for m&m it's going to be one apiece it is indeed i mean that one's a, a hail mary right if you get inside of astro and just break open that class straight away you've basically got sight for free m and are left reeling but they just didn't expect it's again the shield thing, right? We spoke about Osa back on Monday. We saw Kendra on the Monty earlier doing exactly the same thing. You've just seen the Clash doing it here. These shield operators just draw so much attention. They're like magnets or taunts. You just get pulled towards them. And by that time, someone else is swinging you. You've got no expectation that it's coming. You'll see it again here as well. Again, very little expectation. They had one idea, at least the first man did. But by then, the call was, I think, was a little bit too late. And Solotov was just ready and waiting. Crosshair in place, a beautiful 3K. Well, he barely had to nope. move it, did he? He just went around the corner and just held mouse one and just hit them in a line one after another. The thing is, when you're in a rush like that, it's quite difficult sometimes because the tunnel vision kicks in and each player is individually just focusing on what they need to do and where they need to go because they need to be there so quickly. Mm. It's easy to actually stack up in a line like that without really noticing or realising it. And Solotov able to just take full advantage of that interesting placement on the bulletproof camera there just inside of the bookshelf. Going make it difficult to take down almost certainly going to need utility the melee shot will be able to smash the glass and stop it from being useful because you won't be able to see through it anymore but not an easy one that you see it on chalet a couple of times as well in piano in the bookcase at the top you can punch out the books and plant mm. it in the back of there see straight down towards the library hall and no one can do much about it even nades are hard to land onto it because of the angle of destruction you get you basically got to get a gone six at it or get right up in front of it which is Kind of not the point. The Bulletproofs have someone punching it in the face. You've already lost control of the ground. The intel's not going to help you all that much. Let's see how the round plays out, though. 40 seconds in already, and we've got LFO moving at quite a bit of pace, already looking straight in towards the site here. Mowgli, the kind of spear of that charge, as usual. Mowgli's just going to be heading out of the master window, likely heading, to, heading over to the study window where we saw him last time. But LFO definitely bringing much more of a north-sided presence this time. Tyrant's on a little bit of a lurk underneath. I'm not sure that Mowgli's aware of him. He's going to be heading up instead to that study balcony. So just wants to apply a little bit of south-sided pressure, maybe just to take the eyes away from the trophy statuary side whilst the rest of the team make their way over there. But Shinka is... Slowly but surely heading over to study balcony as well on the Hibana. So he's going to be there to open that wall up potentially and just get a line of sight all the way down deep into the bomb site. Bibu clearing out utility. So Bibu's actually managed to move in from trophy statuary side, get himself established inside a 90s in long corridor at the minute. And he's potentially going to challenge onto elbow pretty soon. I kind of took that control around that 90 side top red quite early on and thought, okay, let's all move around and rotate ourselves down south. So you had three trying to push in here, but Solotov hits a Pretty nasty shot straight through onto that study balcony and decimates Rise from the round. The deaths were talking about the number of times Rise is getting caught on the entry. You've seen it now a couple of times come in here. It's not looking the strongest for him. As that time starts to whittle down, though, that last 60 seconds settles in. We now know where they're all looking to hold. Again, two on the red side, two on study side. So the attack is pretty evident. Tyrant could be the real thorn in the sides of LFO, though, here, because him still being on the downstairs, he can come up any staircase that he chooses. It's why they've had to no uh, air mod. Air mad? What am I on about? Nomad air jab things down. I prefer that name. <laughs> it's air mad's the one. Because it does make you mad when you're getting blasted apart by them, sure. Here we go, though. Shinka finding one more in onto Neo. So LFO still down in a man advantage but at least a small balance back from Shinka Tyrant is still that potential factor here he's the what you would call a man over he's the extra man and they don't necessarily need him so he can play very freely here but he does need to watch the clock and make an impact before it runs out Shinka is going to find you oh as Bibu on to Nello and Tyrant it's now or never this is your time to oh strike my. he's going to play underneath and hope to be able to deny this attempt to plant but it's just very unlikely because he doesn't know exactly where it's going down he doesn't have the information and Shinka's going to stick it he now has to get seen coming up red stairs there's no chance for him here P4 easiest kill of his life led down behind the maps he's got the information that he's coming red stairs it is as easy as that there you go good night and that's going to be LF4 closing out round 3 they just walked through sight there it was basically a well the 3 versus 4, three versus four at the 1 point 
They just kind of march in. Tyrant's the one still lurking off on the downstairs. I think because he's expecting to be the entry like it normally is, he's hoping someone's going to come and contest the downstairs and meet him down there. But so far, LFO have just ignored him and said, yeah, forget about that, Roma. Forget about going on the downstairs and trying to clear him. Let's go direct to site and worry about the rest a little bit later into the round. So Tyrant really yet to find a big impact in this game, which is unusual. Normally, he is the big high flyer for this team, getting involved in all the entry engagements, really getting Eminem involved in the start of a round. But so far, a little bit quiet. The problem for Eminem here is, of course, is that they're on the defence as well. I don't want to necessarily roll out that old Villa is always here defender side because it's not always. We see the attack. No, we see the attackers having, you know, reasonable success. Now it's, I think, got a lot closer to 50-50 than it's ever been. But still, what I would say, if you come away from the defence with less than a 3-3, that's a bit of an oh. L. You know, at that point, really, I'm not going to say that you should be coming in and commanding 4-2 every wow. single time on the defence. I don't think that's really the case anymore. But 3-3 is going to be a problem. Solitov, just applying a couple of laser gates up there on the top floor. So there's going to be a lot of focus from Eminem here towards keeping hold of the top floor trophy statuary master, that sort of area. Um, they've got the utility up there to support them in doing it. They've got the holes, the lines of sight from statuary through into closet. They're going to make it as difficult as they can for LFO. Well, quick rehost coming in here while we get that sorted out, but I was really excited by that lineup that I imagine will stick. Normally, you have to stick to the ops that you have selected once you get into that action phase. We saw the Blitz, we had the Osser coming along, we had the IQ, the Finker. It was a very uh, yellow list down that right-hand side of the screen, Tim, given pretty much all those operators do have the yellow icons. Do indeed, do indeed. Not looking great for Eminem so far. There's a bit of work for them to yeah. do. I think that really sums up the stage for them inside of EUL. You know, it's not just this this match, it's the entire stage, really. A bit of work to do. They just don't really seem to be showing us the best. I think a good example today we're seeing is that Solotov's gone absolutely wild in a couple of rounds, but then a lot of the other players have been quiet and it's just like they're struggling to get everybody firing at the same time at the minute. I think back to the team we saw at SI and look, I know the whole meme, look, 10 a.m. is not Eminem's time. We get that. In the later games, you would see them playing with the sort of shape that I think you'd often see teams like TSM doing, right? I speak about this kind of front three an awful lot with the IGL and then the flex support in the back line. That was a shape that worked really well for TSM, obviously to go on and win SI, but you saw Eminem doing the, much the same, arguably not with a stronger back line or arguably with a stronger front line. But when the three them were on all cylinders firing they looked absolutely terrifying but it does feel at points a little bit kind of isolated now again i spoke about tyrant being left out to dry a couple of times just really want to see him tighten this back up and play the way that eminem have been really successful with previously which has been more playing as a unit and playing off each other because as it stands they haven't had the chance to do that look back at round three that what four kills in a row came through to the side of lfo and it was like well where's the trade like, there's not a single trade swing coming in no one's finding anything it was just a lot of isolated gunfights. And part of that is because you want to cover a lot of the map. But that, for me, was an m, &M strength when we saw them at their best. No, it wasn't. And the thing is... Eminem need to find their strength, Des. You know, that's that's the key. They need to find that that crutch. They need to find that reliability, that consistency that they can go through game to game and pick up rounds, pick up wins. Because the thing is, winning's a habit. And as soon as they start doing it, as soon as they get one or two back to back, I think we're going to see a very different team because we know the capabilities that they've got. Um, and it's not going to take much for them to, to show them to us consistently. Mm. I just hope that they can get that going sooner rather than later. We don't want them bringing it stage where you know halfway through stage two they're already going to struggle to get away from the bottom for example they want to be doing it sooner rather than later i think we're going to be heading back into the game very very shortly and mm -hmm. um, we'll just make sure everything is tickety boo that everything is okay before we throw you back over but we're obviously feeling pretty confident because we're back in the lobby okay so they are sticking with those picks that we saw then excellent because this looks like a spicy lineup. You've got the two shields. I know some will look at Osser and go, well, not really what you think of when you think of a shield operator there. She can deploy them, sure. But you can still play her like a shield operator. Sure, she can't shoot, but she's very good at getting up in your face and drawing a bit of attention and time away. So look forward to how that one plays out. It is that dining and kitchen site once again. As mentioned, not a lot can change here. Same ops as before. So I'm really excited to see what play LFO have got in their back pocket because on these more difficult to attack sites, that's when we've seen attacker repick bringing out some really spicy setups. 
Solitov going to be opening up those lines of sight there using the uh, the one punch of Aruni to just go through the soft wall. It's going to give an angle all the way down from Astro into the main corridor that goes into Memorial. We've got the same couple of laser gates that I was talking about last time around. Going to prevent progress from 90 and from Wolf Window from getting in towards Trophy. Just going to help the defenders up there to try and lock down that area. Make sure that there's as little vertical pressure inside as sight for as long as possible. Now then, this could be an interesting one. We've seen this We've seen this Nitro used before. Too nope, late. you've missed your chance, users. It is too late. I don't know Wait if he's for waiting repel. for a sound cue or what, but he's going to keep hold of it. That's not the end of the world. Keep the utility there. Um, but yeah, there was an opportunity there potentially. Now then, what's it's going on here, Des? playing Shield. It's Nino time. You know exactly how this one goes. In they come. This time marching their way through red. There's no station yet to arrive into, but at what point do they pull They cut pull in? It's about now. Charging the way through a barbed wire to begin with. It slows down for a second as the brakes turn out to work just fine, but Solotov finds one. They've slaughtered both on the push in. IQ's gone. The blitz has gone. So now it really all comes down to P4 and what he can do. Playing on the off. So they don't know about the man in the back corner. Not droned out. Not aware. Diffuser's down inside the site. There's only two left for LFO. Their second rush round, it looks like is not going to work out here there's only one left standing and it's Bibu absolutely not I think it's time to put that rush back on the shelf and leave it there until the next matchup because Eminem have shown that they are capable of standing up to it Solitov getting the entry kill once again big game for him so far that's two rounds in a row with the entry as well just giving Eminem that big advantage inside of the round and right now it's all up to Bibu one versus four there is little that he can do except work his way across the top floor he's got time on his side but that's about all that he's got on his side because at the minute he's got three Sharks circling ahead of him, just waiting for him to show himself, for him to peek forward and to give them the opportunity to take him down. He's working across the top because he has no choice. If he goes directly to site, as he may try to do now, you're going to see exactly what happens and it ain't going to be pretty because he's going to be working against vertical angles. You can see the Malusi directly up above him. It's going to be Tyrant who's got an angle down into Memorial, I think, just waiting for that opportunity to take the shots at him. They know exactly where he is and there's very little Bibu can do here. Really trying to bait Eminem's patience here and get them to swing onto him so far. It's just not going to be a thing. They're playing quite disciplined. Holding back, not looking for that KD stack, but there we go. The vertical angle comes into play as you say, Tim. They get the shutdown, and it's another round for Eminem. My only real concerns here are that both of those rounds have come from shutting down a rush, which, again, is fair play to Eminem. But for LFO, it feels like you're almost, again, rolling a dice when you're playing perfectly fine in normal rounds and winning comfortably. Why are you chancing it all on a rush? Take it back to normal mode. That's what they need to do. Like you said, why why give Eminem that? If you're winning anyway, if you don't need that shock factor, if you don't need to surprise them, just take the rounds that you can. And that is the minute for LFO is everything when they play it strategically, when they just, you know, play with a measured pace and go in there. They are getting them done. So 2-2, two, two, Eminem are holding on at the minute. LFO, I think, have been the stronger team realistically, but have just handed Eminem a couple of rounds. I'm not saying that it's all been gifted to them, but those couple of rushes have certainly given Eminem a little bit of a breather because they've been prepared, they've been ready for it. So this time around, we're going to be on trophy statuary. Eminem, they're going to look to get their third round here. I think if they can come away with at least three they'll at least be satisfied with that four will be a score absolutely and p4 pulling out the special here as well it looks like the nook gonna get locked in we'll see where he's gonna go crouch walking normally on this map we see it a lot actually in apat north now think about it a lot of knock players that just go crouch walking through basement pick a staircase and come walking up up, up up it and see what they can find so maybe he starts out down there okay no starting out on the ground floor instead could be looking to get straight down into pantry stairway and work his way up from there mind you so he should be pretty much a solo operator once they they understand that the path forward is clear Morgle are going to be taking out the window, very conscious of the study window as well. Doesn't want to be getting himself peeked from across there. P4 has managed to knock his way into kitchen pretty quickly. He's sat inside the pantry at the minute, just going to draw on ahead of himself and then potentially push through and move up Astro stairs. Could be a little bit of a surprise package for Eminem if they are not expecting it, but the rest of them are all crowded around Master and it's not going to be a rush, but are. again, it is a concerted push at the same time. 
Simon Solotov. He's going to find Morgley for his third entry in a row. He also had the entry in round one. I missed round two, but he's got at least four entries, which is ludicrous in just five rounds. Really high flying at the moment, Solotov, and shutting down that initial aggression. We spoke in the early game about Mowgli's addition to this team and how it really gave them an extra tip of the spear alongside P4. So while P4's off on the map doing his own thing, Mowgli is meant to be the man finding some space for them, but there he runs straight into his death and the rest of the team is now ground to a halt. Now, or just trying to close off that line of sight that's been opened up by the Selma Chargers of the Ace, just trying to prevent the long angle in towards sight and also to feed information back in. What have we got in Master? What can I see on the window? What is the push looking like? For now, Rise is going to hop on into the bathroom, challenging onto the stairs there. So likely aware that somebody's playing there. It was Neo last time around on the Jaeger. I'm not sure if it is this time, but he's going to have to dip away as the nade comes in. Users manages to get the kill onto P4. That's going to oh. be the knock shot down nitro goes almost. out almost takes rise down but it's just behind him doesn't quite catch his heels and rise is going to continue fighting with the man on astro stairs while tyrant takes a ton of damage coming into the final minute you got to start their push forward here at this point that's what you're looking for another one coming in solitov a 3k he's on one today tim this is the kind of stuff we saw back at si out of him and much for the much of cl prior as well an absolute demon in the server some days that's why m and sometimes get called solitov and marshmallows rather than molotov and marshmallows and today is definitely more of the former nello on this clash as well is going to make life in absolutely sufferable for bibu he's gonna have nothing to do with it anymore they know this round is pretty much done and dusted so for lfo this is a bit of a timeout and whether through Crank or through Crook, they found their way to potentially three rounds on the board here, Tim, again, in a game where it felt like, for the most part, they simply wouldn't be able to find this. The good thing for M&M is that they are getting the rounds done even sort of against adversity. You know, LFO have been a strong team when they haven't rushed into sight. They've been able to close M&M down well, but M&M have kept themselves fighting and somehow find themselves on top. And that's really not going to be the end of the world for them, whether it's down to Solotov, whether it's a team effort, however you want to look at it, it is still good progress for them. 3-2 guarantees them an even split and an opportunity to take an advantage into the second half, which is much more what they would have been looking for from the defence on Villa. Just wild. I mean, <laughs> I don't want to draw any big conclusions just yet, but this has always been part of my frustration with LFO. It's one week they can, even one play day in the same week, they can look like the best team in the competition. They can be absolutely lights out. They can look phenomenal. And then the next play day, you get a completely different team, like you're seeing now, that is just simply playing some of these rounds very strangely. The two rushes we've seen, Mowgli pushing ahead of his team, the lack of droning in those rush rounds as well to get them prepped up for the actual rush itself. It just feels like they want to skip steps and just assume, okay, well, we know what they're doing and we know what our strat is and that's enough. We can just push forward and make ours happen. And it's biting them in the backside. I really want to see them get some more composure about them. Look, you're on the attacking side. It's not the end of the world, but you have no guarantee of how your own defenses are going to go. And if you lose this one to Eminem, given how everyone and his dog are beating Eminem right now, you're going to be really kicking yourself because this could be the kind of game that means they don't make it to the major. Certainly could be. Final defensive round for M&M and LFO are going to be looking to right a few wrongs here and get things to 3-3 on the half, I would imagine. It's going to be Aviator Games this time around. We've seen a variation of pushes from LFO so far. We've seen the completely study-focused push. We've also seen Bibu working in through Trophy Statuary. We'll see what we get from them this time. We haven't really seen too much of an attempt on main stairs from inside of the main door, so it'd be interesting. I mean, this is exactly where P4 and Bibu we're shaping up towards at the moment where you head up the stairs clear out the man there push into study at the same time and just take over the south side of the map from there it's going to be up to Nello to try and hold on he's got a banshee he's got a shield he's got an ads he's got a mute jammer he's got everything that he could possibly need Alrighty. No funny business this time around. The floor is actually slowing things down a lot more and we spoke about that desire to see them play air quotes more normally and it feels like with the Flores on side, you are kind of forcing the team to a slowdown there because you need to get those four drones out. You need to get rid of critical utility. So at least now we know they're droning, whether it's info droning or let's blow up as much stuff as we can kind of droning is besides the point. It's droning nonetheless, Tim. So I'm enjoying that it is at that slower pace and this should yield good results for LFO as long as they stay composed. 
Morgley just trying to work the vertical nades there. Not going to find anybody damage-wise, but may well take down some utility along with them. Shinka, look at him just snaking the Rotero drone in there, trying to keep it behind cover as much as he could. Stop it getting taken out this time. Morgley does find some feet, and he finds Finally. the man Solotov. He's had plenty of entry kills, but he's now going to take an entry death there. And Neo just being chased deeper and deeper as the push comes up the stairs. Morgley manages to get Nello second in the round. That leaves Neo all alone. He's taking damage as well. Users, he finds and Shinka leaves us now in a four versus three. One minute 20 left on the clock. And this is lightning fast from LFO again. They're not really moving slowly at any point during this game. And Rise, he's looking to push through into study now. They've got south side control. And this is not going to be the easy for the defenders that are left on the side of Eminem. Users down to one health. <laughs> I don't mind the pace here because it's all playing off things, right? They knew that they couldn't have the man on stairs run back to the top of the stairs because a Flores drone was there about to explode like Mowgli's doing right now. A 3K in the round. See He's one more, but Rise steals it away from him. Gets it and gets the fourth. It's a 4K for Mowgli in the round. Again, Tim, we called for it. A little more composure, a little more control. And these rounds look solid for LFO, but they will end that half at a 3-3 split. Where was that LFO in round right? four and five? That's my question, because they just looked absolutely unstoppable then. What an attack it was from, you know, they had a bit of everything. They had vertical nades for free kills. They had a Mowgli 4K. They had pace. They had, you know, the, the thought to actually slow that down as well. You know, they had that pace. They came in, they got the stairs, they got the south side, they got study, but then they just hit the brakes for 10 mm. seconds. Couple of drones, bit of information. It was just so measured and it was so, so good from LFO. Now, we'll see if we can carry that momentum on to defence. They're going to find themselves in round seven and they too will take Aviator games to begin. I do want to touch again on that Flores drone in the main stairs because we haven't really seen a Flores drone used like that that much. It's more for like getting rid of shields and banshees and you name it. Again, with it being at the top of the main stairs meant that the man that was sat lower down on the main stairs couldn't run back up to get away else he'd have died to the drones. So he was forced to stay and fight. That's when LFO said, right, now go. Two players push from the bottom of stairs sure one gets down gets rest straight up back by finker again with the mogul with mogul on the finker it was just a beautiful little bit of team play and again a very unique one that you don't see all that much coming out of a flores wonderful stuff let's see how eminem fare on their attacks I think they're going to have to bring, you know, a little bit of pace. I don't think that they can go too slowly at this LFO side. They've proven that they're uh, ready for the gunfights today. So I think Eminem need to sort of go at them with the same sort of shock and awe, really. Get in there and find some kills and just let them know that they're in for a torrid time on defence and that they're going to get roughed mm. up just like Eminem have been at times. Rise is going to be the man trying to hold down those main stairs. He's going to be buddied up with Shinka, so he's got the smoke in tow as well. Got the utility on the stairs. Not quite as much as Nello had there's no shield in place but there is a banshee and ads as, as well now looks like he's actually going to be moving underneath and he may be the man to challenge onto there and p4 just looking for a sneaky kill through the hatch there but he's either too late or there's going to be no joy for him either we haven't touched on here is the lack of a hard breach as well on the side of mnm yes they've got the hard breach gadget but this is very reminiscent of what we saw from stage three road last year where they kind of came to the map and said right we have a countdown at about the 70 second mark three two one we push site we jump in we run through doorways we don't really care too much about getting walls opened up and it's really weird for a map that normally revolves around so many reinforced walls you think you need some kind of hard breach on this map but teams or at least a couple of them are showing that isn't strictly required they've got all their focus currently going on to main stairs nades galore being tossed up there but they haven't really found much with those first three they're all gathered around just waiting for something to happen here but boys you're the ones that's got to make something happen Rise floating like a butterfly there and showing us his fancy footwork. Just able to dip and duck up and down the stairs, keep himself out of the way of those nades, and he's wasted more than half of the round before Eminem can start getting themselves established. They have now done so. They've got the south side. They can work their way into 90 corridor if they wish and to study. But Mowgli, he's going to find the opener onto Solotov. Second in a row that we've seen that exact combination. So Solotov going from hero to zero on those entry battles at the minute with Mowgli coming coming out on top at the minute. Users, however, he's going to make his way up the red stairs. Does he know there's one there? Yes, he does. Bibu on yellow ping. Nice and easy for users to pre-fire. 45 seconds left to go. Eminem need to get moving in towards yeah, tight. I've just got my sheet again. It's either Solotov or Mowgli finding the entry and all the ones that I have got filled in was the exact inverse. So Mowgli getting Solotov the last two rounds before that. It was Solotov getting Mowgli for two of his four entries. It's just back and forth between these two and the numbers show it. A double kill for Mowgli steps in, swings out and gets another as well as Nello comes swinging in. Can't quite hit the shot 
start to 3k for Mowgli in the round. LFO looking to go towards a first round victory, make it a quad, but Tyron finally steps in for the trade. How do you shut down players like Mowgli, Tim? They just win every single gunfight they step into. Tyron stepping into sight, a one versus three. He knows he's got to find the kills. He can't try and stick the plant here. Finds one and a bit of a cheeky pre fire in towards Vault. One more sat behind it, needs to find his man. Sees the head, can he go and get, get the kill? No, he can't, because he's the plant straight after as well. Simply not enough time, LFO get round seven. Eminem needs to start going into Mowgli mob-handed. That's the only way that they're going to get this done. At the minute, he is not challengeable in a 1v1. Nope. We've seen that. He is winning fight after fight. You just said it yourself there, Des. How do you shut down a player like Mowgli right now? And the answer is you go two and you go three at a time. It's the only way. You accept that you're going to take a death, maybe even two, but so long as you come way away with his, that is a big part of it. But Eminem there, they've just challenged him three separate times individually. They challenge him on study door and then they challenge him two seconds later on study door he picks himself up a 2k no problem whatsoever the solo challenge then comes in onto map store which is even worse really because he's got a shield in front of him so he's playing behind utility as well and he guess what cuts him down and finds himself a third within about 15 seconds it's just a little bit about timing for Eminem they need to make those challenges at the same time if one comes map store and one comes study door at the same time what does Mowgli do then I mean granted the Mowgli we're seeing today probably he just hits them flicks them on a 180 and kills <laughs> yeah. both of them but it's very unlikely and that's what Eminem need to do just challenge at the same time one of those days it's mad that he's what two 4k's in a row nine, ca nine kills total since the rehost the rest of the team two kills. <laughs> it's been a quiet one for most of LFO, but then when Mowgli's literally gobbling up all the possible frags in a round, are you at all surprised? Let's see what Solotov can do, because he's getting himself back into a bit of vengeance by the looks of it. Also picking up the Nook. Neo's playing on the Decabi to assist him as well. He obviously gives someone a ring. They know exactly where they are. In comes the Nook. Bam! No idea that she's even coming from the darkness. So, they can do some damage, and we all know who the ideal target is in this round, Tim, but you've got to try and lock him down first. You've got to find him and you've got to shut him down. Like I say, section him off. Don't allow him to play. If they recognise that he's inside of maps, they should have a good idea of which operators he plays and which areas of the maps that he plays. So it would be reasonable to make a guess that that is going to be his positioning. But again, giving him those one-on-one -on -one v sorry one-on-one -on -one challenges at the minute, he's got P4 backing him up from the top of main stairs. And Nade. for the time being, he's just going to good stay night. there. <laughs> Come to beautiful Nade, though. And that is a good step one. Solitov takes him down with the Nade, but more. Mowgli comes in and gets the trade, gets the refrag, because guess what? He's challenged him 1v1. I'm telling you again, Tim, these two just cannot leave each other alone. Solotov finding a wonderful entry nade, only for Mowgli to swing and get the trade back. Oh, early round is their domain. Mainly Mowgli's, but sometimes Solotov as well. Going to be halfway through the round now with 4v4. A tyrant finds Raizu, just lets himself get a little bit sloppy there, just running up to the doorway. Not much cover, not really ADSing or ready for the challenge. And that's going to be pretty easy for Tyrant to say goodnight. That's going to be tucked in nice and tight, 4v3. Eminem get themselves an advantage. And I've just got a feeling that this one is going to continue like this all the way to the end. Upside down, yeah, repel. Yeah, yeah. Mowgli sees the gun barrel. That's all he needs. That is the information that he was looking for. And when you give him that sort of advantage, Nello, he's going to take it. And that's going to be now three versus three coming into the final minute. It's just like watching someone run around in deathmatch, isn't it? It's unbelievable how he's just finding every single kill he seems to come up against. Members of uh, Eminem giving him a little bit too much leeway, it feels, in a good number of these rounds. Nate from below. There is no one upstairs. No drones coming in there to assist the side of Eminem. They're just kind of playing blind here, hoping they find someone, but they've already stepped away. Bibu, he knows it is coming. Is he going to swing it? Yes, he goes for the swing. The timing was almost spot on, but the player did back away. Tyrant almost losing his life again through the hatch. That should be a one-time mistake that you learn from, but Mowgli's on it again. What is this, man? He's had a 4K in the last two. He's on course for another in this round, if not an ace. Stop him! Someone, please! Honestly, Mowgli cannot miss at the minute. He could play this game blindfold, it looks like, and he would still be there hitting his shots. He knows there's another there. That's going to be the quad. Bibu, steal. How many aces is Mowgli going to have taken away from him? That's got to be the question. Another 4K for him. Bibu finding the last man. He won't have any complaints at the minute because LFO, they're starting to stretch their legs and they're starting to cruise towards a victory. 5-3 now. The thing about victories like this is I'm always a little bit nervous to kind of say, oh, you know, it's, it's, it's dominant, it's emphatic, whatever 
whatever word you want to use to describe it because... Morgley's dominant. That's the Morgley's problem. Morgley's emphatic. This is the problem. And it's been this story throughout the stage, right? And again, it comes back to my frustration with ex-Vitality, LFO. You know, back when they were Vitality, the frustration was that some days they would just not quite be at the races. And the days they were would largely come down to big plays coming out of players like P4. And we're seeing it evolve again into stage one of 2022, only it's Mowgli's name attached to that instead. And I always say a team that relies on hero plays is a fragile team. On the day that player doesn't show up, things can go horrifically wrong and fall apart at the seams. So for LFO, I know this game, okay, sure, you're riding on Mowgli, but for the next number of games, we've really got to see some strong team efforts coming out if they're going to be a serious major contending team. Yeah, that's the reality. I mean, we've you know we've had the the tack time out come out from Eminem there. We'll see if LFO can continue. But basically, the scoreboard at the minute you've got Mowgli on thirteen, <laughs> Rise one, Chinka one, Bibu it's, one, it's ridiculous. B4 zero. Like that's ridiculous. It's, that is utterly ridiculous. And like you say, yes, part of that comes down to the fact that Mowgli's just hoovering up all the kills. You know, there's nothing else <laughs> that LFO can do. If he didn't get them, then some. Yes, other players would have got more kills. So there's, there's a bit of both going on there. But like you say, LFO can't always rely on these these individual no, players. No. And this thing I do want to see improve. Because I want this team to be, you know, up there fighting it for the top four spots, but not in a fashion when it's all relying I'd on one player. I'd love to see them at a major. The amount of times that they've been close and that we thought that they were going to get there. Yeah. You know, I'd, I'd love to oh, see Oh, mate, the, no, the number, the number of like the Playday 9 games that they've choked over the last year. Just don't get me started. It kills me. But... I want to see Mowgli there. You know, we want to see our biggest names, our biggest stars on Mate, the biggest no stage. One, no one needs to see one a young 18-year-old spirit crush when he comes up against the free, free frontline fraggers of TSM or against all of Dan Wong Kier, for example, and just completely crush any hope he had of thinking, yeah, I'm really good. I can kill three or four people. Only near you well you can, mate, sadly. <laughs> or when he has the uh, the true LAN experience of being run over by a 24 kill game for <laughs> oh, It's just, that's the level of competition we're talking about, though, again, which is why I get a little bit, I don't know, worried when it's all down to one player. But we digress. We spoke about Mogli an awful lot. It's hard not to when he's had three, four Ks in a row. But let's see how this next round goes. Hopefully, Eminem have learned a little bit of a lesson here. They've got much the same lineup again with the Decabi and the knock on side. Everything else, for the most part, has changed. But that core of trying to be the Roma Hunter to shut Mowgli down is the same. Tarrant going to be deploying the drone, but he's got it on the advanced deployment there, so he can maybe just bait out a sound call, see if anybody's on the main stairs who fancies a challenge, but he was ready for it. There was nobody there. Solitov can get himself inside the vault, likely lock himself down, make himself safe, do a little bit of droning. Mowgli, the man to watch at the minute. There is no two ways about it. He's going to be over on the trophy statuary side, decides that it's time to bail. He's going to go over the handrail, and he's going to look for himself back down on that main floor, and Eminem, They've done well here, Des. They've quickly got control over the top floor. They can start working the yeah, verticals. They need to be very careful, though, about Bibu on that pulse with the Nitro in oh. hand because he's also got P4 playing with him as well. So there's two cracks at Damn, that it's one. Not, it's not Bibu on the pulse I'm worried about. It's Mowgli on the Malusi hanging out towards the west, largely undroned at this point as well. You know, he could play real spoiler here if they're not too careful because they've ignored where he is at the moment. They're trying to push the way inside of uh, Memorial instead. They are in. They're looking towards the site. Where does he come from? When does the flank start to happen? Pushing in now, looking towards that table. They can get him for a plan. Solotov still largely undetected, but the swing comes in from Bibu. All too easy, and down goes Solotov. Nice, easy start for LFO, as you say. Rise able robbed. to get in on it as well. And this is what we wanted, Des. We wanted more of those LFO players involved. And they are stepping up. They're going to find themselves one apiece. Bibu Rise, and that leaves us now five versus three. Eminem can continue their assault from above, but it's likely going to be too little. You just feel like LFO have probably got this site locked down now. Bibu, he's going to get himself to safety. He'll likely pull out that heartbeat scanner again and just continue feeding information in. And Yusus, he's just looking for those vertical angles he can shoot out the top of that wall but he's not going to get any more he won't get any access to the man playing in behind it and right now it feels like Eminem are just trying to push from anywhere that they can Bibu able to find Neo Nello gets one on to rise but he's got a lot more work to do 2v4 8 seconds left to go time ticking by and it's not going to matter as the kills come in P4 Bibu and for once there's we have a round where we're not shouting about Morgley the rest of LF4 stepping up getting that round and that's going to put them on it's like yeah you got to play C today it's not just to sit in a corner and crouch all day but uh, no we actually get to press mouse one and shoot some people thank god for that 
It's one of those that <laughs> Mowgli got a little bit robbed in red as well. I really thought he'd get the kill, but then Rise like snatched it away from him. And I was just like, oh, poor guy. But I think again for Eminem there, it was a little bit one dimensional. They rode everything on two players pushing in through Memorial. That was kind of their playmaking opportunity. And outside of that, it was a man jumping in towards Pantry who didn't know about the pulse in there. Really, once the knocker kind of fell away, everything else just unraveled itself and there was no real threat to LFO throughout the entire round. 63, they find themselves. Eminem, it's looking pretty dicey. Three rounds on the bounce needed and you're going into Aviator Games. It does not look pretty. Nope, it's not boarding well. We saw Aviator Games, LFO defense back in round seven. Mowgli kicked us off with one onto Solitov. He kicked us off with three more after that, and that was the round done. So Eminem need to, first and foremost, keep themselves more alive, and they need to keep Mowgli more dead. Those would be my specific instructions for this round if they're going to have a more successful attack. At the minute, Mowgli is on the roam. He's underneath. He's on the alibi. I'm going to head himself back up red stairs potentially here. Yep, get himself back up to the top floor and see where he finishes up does he open up the hatch he's given himself plenty of options to get up and down between those floors to be able to rotate around but Eminem immediate pressure is going to come on the study side Alrighty, Tyrant being so passive at this point just waiting for someone to come and poke their head out of a window but for the most part, LFO haven't really been the kind of jump out of windows, throw themselves out of doors style of play for much of this stage, and especially in much of this game. Instead, it's been about planting their feet in a certain area of the map and contesting you at those windows, but not actually getting up against the windows themselves, arguably because there are so many places that you can be seen from. They are watching them just in case a certain Mowgli does pop up in front of them, but to stand so far, no one has done just that. Now we can see the focus coming out for these Rotaras once more. And we're calling back to that first half. LFO used them really, really well. Here they might get rid of that Banshee. That one's already gone towards the right. So one bit of gadgetry gone. They'll be looking for the rest as well to start getting nades up onto this main player, Stairs player. Feels like it was a little bit of caution from Nello there. He wanted to be sure that he got the Banshee and so just didn't send the Rotero maybe as deep as he could have done. A jump a stair or two later, maybe he gets himself a little bit of a bonus, a little bit of extra utility there as well, but it's always risk and reward. He managed to get rid of the Banshee Ooh. and that will have been the big player. What a shot from users. Absolute beauty on the reverse angle. Mowgli might have had it all his own way so far, Des, but he didn't have his own way there. He was too taken out by users that was an absolute beauty five versus four and that could be a big step for Eminem they've got the big threat off the board for LFO but as the last round taught us there are kills across the rest of this squad as well oh yeah still dodging around in sight for now at least LFO just holding down a couple more nades no doubt inbound from below as well five in the back pockets of Eminem that's a lot to be using one's heading towards vault here will Bibby be the target now yeah, we'll get himself chunked out here as they're getting ready for it. Do they know that he's sat in that back corner? There comes the nade. It's all too easy when you've got this vertical control. Going to be an absolute beauty. Users having a field day from underneath of the minute. Shinka taking a pot shot onto the south stairs. Not going to find anybody for the time being. Doesn't spot out the drone that's going to be feeding Another information one. and probably his location in. And that's how you get those vertical nades. This time it's going to be under the chassis. And oh. Shinka just managing to stray his way away and keep himself safe. Solitov knows that there's a potential peak going to come from behind that soft wall. Doesn't hold his angle long enough to find rise. But five versus three. Eminem are not going to be too worried here. They get no. Oh, they do. Yes, they do. I thought the Rotero had been shot out just before it anchored them, but it did not. That's going to give them the oh. access that they need. But look at the aggression. The shotgun. No way. From Shinko, he finds two. That could Uses, be though. a round defining moment. But no, Users Neo. They fought the way back. 2v1. It's all oh. to rise. He on the spray down. He gets him. 1v1. Plant going down. Neo, he's going to stick this. But no. Rise, what does he do? Does he go? Does he wait? He's going to wait for the no. to pop up. I think he sees him. It's all a spray down. Who wins? Neo, after getting the diffuser down somehow oh. comes away with a bit of a panic spray pair, honestly like <laughs> it sounds bad but when i saw it was rise versus neo i was like oh no like i just thought neo was going to lose it there in that dying second i really thought either he'd pop up and get himself taken out completely immediately i thought it would all go pear shape but he holds on and keeps eminem in the game Sure, it comes down to the very last second, but a win is a win. 6-4 LFO. Two more for Eminem to throw us through to at least overtime. And we know they sorely need some of those points, Tim. They are still down in 10th place. They get something from this game. They can at least start contesting with Pones for 9th place. But either way you paint it, it's not going particularly well. 
Not at all, not at all. I th honestly, I thought Rise was going to win it there. <laughs> I thought his man just, I thought his man just steps up in front of him when he comes off the diffuser, and I thought Rise had played it really well. But Neo, with the uh, the surprising juke from behind the bar, just gave him the little razzle dazzle, gave him the eyes, and came away with the kill. Rise, unfortunate there. But LFO are going to still be in the lead. They've got two more opportunities to close this one out. It is match point again, and it will be Aviator Games again. They obviously felt like they were close, but let's not forget they were five. Five versus three for a long time in that round. Users able to get two great kills from underneath. So might be a case of LFO just sending one man downstairs, see if they can shut out that vertical threat. All righty. Well, they know the nades are a problem, and so much so that there are still six on side to play behind, and the Flores returns once again. Eminem feeling they found the winning formula to work their way through their woes, and given there are two shields on the other side, yeah, it makes total sense to me. Why fix what ain't broken? Bringing the same once more here, and Eminem putting all their focus on trying to work down from this top side, and no doubt that study balcony. Tyrant just taking out the default cam. Going to be looking to work towards main stairs, but very cautious about entering at the minute. Rise has got that utility stacked up again, pretty much the same as we saw last time. Mute Jammer, ADSs, Banshee, it is all there to keep him in position. Morgan oh. able to take down a draw now. That is a big start. P4, he's going to hit himself and Nitro out of the window there of Astro. Manages to get himself one, and that's a big start. That's Neo gone, the hero of the last round, and it's going to be 5v4. It feels like such a kicker when you're the flank watch and you're just waiting for some kind of random crap to come out of nowhere and kill you and you just get c4 and it's like fantastic appreciate you guys thanks so much i wasn't even the one trying to breathe the primary entry and you've ruined my day thank you kindly tyrant with the nade up here on towards that wolf window and everyone else rotating down towards the south follow the grenades my friends follow the grenades because there are six of them on side and it looks like at least four of them are working on being on the downstairs so once again those nades will get flying and hopefully they'll find a couple of picks in goes the Rotero for Nello. Does he send it a little bit deeper this time? Not playing it safe and gets his job done again. That's going to be the Banshee taken down. That's the focus of that Rotero. That much is clear. Nade goes in from Solitov. Not going to find anybody, but usually will take a little bit of utility inside of that study door. Beepu all the way down in the basement. He's certainly one to keep an eye on. Could be a real nuisance in the late round if he doesn't leave it too long. Rise manages to find Yuzus, another player who did well last time around in the last round attacking this site he's not going to have any more joy here and it is now 5v3 coming into oh, that final rise. minute 5v2 4v2 as kills start to rain in rise gets one but traded out immediately nello pushing on the main stairs does, does take control of oh. them and solitov gets one gets two what a double from him on study absolutely beautiful now if they can turn it into a win off the back of this spot then you know it's off the back of that man who's still standing as well so can do a lot of work it's shinka dug inside a site and p4 holding just outside a map's door i don't think they know that he's there him. Maybe they do. If they don't, he can do so much damage when Solotov comes stepping in towards the site. But with about 20 seconds on the clock, all right, you've had your time to do your drawing now. This is your last drone standing. He knows that he's there, Tim. He definitely knows. Is he going to swing him? Solotov doesn't miss those. Finds a 3k, gets the fourth as well. It's a big round to send it to six and five. And by the looks of it, Tim, Eminem could be bringing us through to overtime in just one more round. I'm not sure how we've got to the 12th round here because LFO <laughs> at points have looked like they were just going to crush them, were just going to close it out immediately. But Eminem have just clung on desperately to this one and have really kept themselves in it. And that is a huge 4K for Solotov there. Depending on how Eminem do on the stage, that could be one of the most important moments that they have. That was massive from Solotov to keep them in this. 6-5 now they've fought their way back into this. They've got one more round to go. Trophy statuary we saw back in round eight. It was another LFO win, but that doesn't seem to matter too much to Eminem as they've just strung together two successful AVG attacks. Can they do the same here in trophy statuary? I think one thing they could really do with doing is not having to fight from behind. Obviously, they lost the opening kill last time around, but they were able to keep going and get themselves back into it. They don't really want that disadvantage round after round. Uh, and, you know, Tim, it kind of goes back to what I said at the end of round nine after Mowgli's third, fourth, K in a row. It makes me nervous how fragile they are when one player is doing all the work. He's not done much the last two rounds and Eminem have won both. Again, it goes to show why you cannot rely on these big hero plays and players playing out of their skin to carry you through games. You need to show that composure if you're going to be a top four team to keep a 10th place team down in the dirt. It's not looking amazing for LFO here and truthfully, unless we see a massive start to this round out of Mowgli, I can see this going to overtime.
I'd agree with you. I think you're absolutely right. It is, it is definitely a key point, a, a big factor that, you know, Morgan has a quiet couple of rounds and they just don't really get much done now then. We're going to have Tyrant and Solotov looking to get themselves inside of the building. They're going to be going in on the lower floor, potentially. going to be hunting down Bibu and Rise. Morgan is on red stairs at the minute, but he's going to move himself back into sight. You see, I don't know whether it'd be an idea to just get him out on the roam a little bit more, just give him a little bit of freedom and see if he can pick up one or two of those kills. But for the time being, it's going to be Rise and Bibu on those duties. Solotov going to be sending the drones in. That's pretty much the job of the entirety of M&M right now as they're all feeding information. Usus is the only one moving through the map at the minute. He's looking to get himself to the bottom of main stairs and then potentially push up and start working through Aviator games. At least it's slow and patient for now. I'm glad there's a bit of composure behind it and not getting overexcited and trying to go in all too aggressively here, working their way on this east side of the map. Solotov is just daring someone to swing on that hatch. And I don't know who's playing above. I think at this point it's Mowgli who's in the area. Yep, yeah, okay, he's inside of Statuary, but not in a position where he wants to get onto that hatch just yet. Probably isn't too aware that anyone's pushing in on that side. Meanwhile, Tyrant's working his way in on the west. We've got a bit of a pinch being set up here, Tim. Do they know about it? They're holding the angle. They see the man, but no, he can't quite find him. Neo gets one kill. It's traded back, though. Use just going down on the other. P4 into a second. It's not Mowgli getting involved, but the other members of LFO are making it happen. Rise stepping in, swinging and playing for the trade. Brings it to a three versus two. Nello and Tyrant have got it all to do. This knock yet to get really involved in the round. Rise allowing P4 the death there, really, because he just sort of went in. He was oh, running his team, mate. Than his team. challenge, and <laughs> it was making it a little bit difficult for him to be able to challenge Solotov. And it just gave Solotov that time while Rise repositioned. But Rise gets the kill nonetheless, and he's going to continue the challenge underneath. This time, he's up against the knock of Tyrant, and it could be a big moment if he gets this one. But no, no Tyrant way. able to level things out 2v2. And again, Eminem are just able to keep themselves fighting. But Mowgli is one of the last alive this time. Can he break the curse of the last couple of rounds and can oh. he get in and do something really meaningful? But now that's the one with the plant as well, obviously, on the upstairs here, all the walls going down inside a kitchen, but Nello's pretty much alone there for now. Tyrant's fishing from below, finds one as well. That's the nade you need, Shinka gone. But look who's left, it's Mowgli. He knows where one's coming from here, sees the man, gets the one kill, flicks for the second. But Nello gets the one versus one, careers us through into overtime. Oh, who would have thought it? Uh, the way that this one started, let's not forget a uh, point. It was 6-3 to LFO. Eminem have been able to win three back-to-back -back rounds. I won't say out of nowhere, but they've done fantastically well there. And they start on the attack, which has got to be great for them because that's where they've just had their back-to-back -back rounds. They just need to keep rolling now. They've got themselves into overtime, guaranteed themselves a point. They could take this whole thing. Whew. Well... It's, yeah, it, it's something. <laughs> it's hard to kind of pin where it falls to as well. Like, is it on Eminem or is it on LFO? Like, in a way, LFO are going to... Mowgli's gone quiet. We're not seeing that sort of play coming out anymore. Sure, there's been one round that LFO have won quite solidly as a team earlier in the game, but... Otherwise, it's just been Eminem finding those critical kills. I know Tyrant's been a bit behind still playing on that Nook. Has always been, you know, 10 seconds behind the rest of the team, but... In those last dying seconds of a round, that's where you're seeing some of the impacts starting to come through. Has pulled himself up to seven and seven. Similar story for Yuzus and Solotov is still flying, as we know. Eminem continue on the attack, and that is where I feel nervous. And it's not something I ever thought I'd say. You're nervous going on the defense first on Villa. But if I was LFO after the crushing you've had for the last few rounds, you're definitely nervous, Tim. Oh, absolutely. There's no two ways about it. Eminem have been able to find them at every single turn and LFO have been in control a couple of times. They've had the man advantage and still Eminem have kept fighting and they're showing some of that spirit that got them to the SI. They're showing that ability and that uh, passion to keep themselves fighting here and it's nice to see because there's been a couple of losses where you felt like they just sort of rolled over a little bit and didn't show us their best, whereas now there's no two ways about it. You can say that they've been competitive here, win or lose from this point. So it's off. He's He's going to be looking for a similar entry point to the one that he's used previously, which is trying to get himself in towards kitchen area. Bibu is on the downstairs. He was playing with Rise previously. I don't know if Rise is downstairs with him this time as well or not, but Nello with a sneaky little drone in the bushes there. Going to find a little bit of information. Just a little bit. 
Not quite going to lead to a death just yet, but all in good time, I'm very sure. Solotov working his way back out now. He's got underneath here, I think, more to make sure no one was playing on the downstairs, of which there is not. No one's quite skulking around. Though I'm sure give it time and you'll find one or two who are doing just that. Probably speaks quite a lot of volumes that Mowgli is playing on site here as well. Isn't the one kind of off holding towards master side and trying to burn through time, for example. No, he's playing much more passively and much more defensively. Eminem just looking to continue their streak at the minute. Morgley's going to get himself back onto site and Eminem just absolutely tearing across the bottom here. And it's something that LFO need to mm. be careful of because we've seen them have a real impact from underneath both users and Tyrant finding kills in the last few rounds from that verticality using nades, using guns, reverse angles. Hello. Exactly like that one from users. But what a start. Rise is going to show that Another. verticality is in the LFO playbook as well. P4 gets one. Tyrant round manager the trade out comes the nade can they level this up we know that Eminem can fight from behind but the movement is too rapid from LFO for them to get caught out by that explosive so much back and forth between the verticals there ultimately balancing into a 4 versus 3 for LFO in that last 60 seconds Solotov scorking once again now he did find Bibbo on the right side of the vault last time so don't blame him for trying again but Mowgli was off towards the left a small change in player means a small change in position and things don't quite work out the same way Solotov getting himself up those main stairs, looking to start this final push in towards site. 3v4, 30 seconds left to go, and they are going to look to get moving soon. We've got the little walk coming down that corridor. Does he know there's a man behind the bar? Yes, he does, Shinka. <laughs> he takes a peek. He managed to get two no, there previously, unable to find any this time. He's going to try again. Does he find him? No, just can't find the angle, can't find the accuracy as he pumps that shotgun in the direction of m and He sees oh! the man he sees the barrel but he can't do anything there's going to be two kills come in and Mowgli he's going to find Solotov 1v3 now all up to Neo not looking good with three seconds to go and surely LFO have hung on there's nothing he can do the time ticks down and that is going to be LFO managing to get themselves that first defensive round Ooh, by hook or by crook they get it over the finish line Tim and they are at that match point now to some level they'll be kicking themselves that even this even got through to overtime given how far ahead they were after that four round flurry that got them to this point and for Eminem equally you've had your little comeback you had your resurgence after things started coming together don't let that go to waste both teams really wanted to get this over the finish line LFO with the chance to do that on the attack here it's going to be a trophy and statutory defense for Eminem not going to aviator games like they started him back on their defensive half earlier on so not quite trying to throw the attackers off because as we all now know attack of repick is a thing but clearly not feeling 100% confident in their defenses in aviator game because they did lose all three of them Tim they did Let's see if they can do things differently here in Trophy. Having a look they won back both. at Eminem's... They won both in five. Trophy, they did. Um, yep, two and five. It went well for them. They started out with <laughs> opening kills. That was... A, but both with the Solotov 3K in them, by the way. I've just noticed. Both with the Solotov 3K, <laughs> essentially. They started out with the opening kills and were able to just roll on forwards from there. So Eminem going to be looking for a little bit more of the same, I think, here. They need Solotov to, to step up and really power them into it or maybe somebody to take his place he's had a great uh, game since the rehorse 12 and 7 there's a couple more to add on to that as well just chasing down Mowgli who currently sits on 15 and 6 it's been a real battle between those two for who's going to come out on top here right now Mowgli has the advantage as does LFO question is can Solotov raise Eminem back up to the challenge mm. getting themselves set up here on their push straight in There'll probably be questions. I know Fabian pointed this out on the desk earlier as well. They've got five drones in back pocket, only two out on the field. Yet you're all kind of already fishing around the site. So really, you want to be getting that out in the map. Start looking for the information, figuring out what's going on. Rises on the upside down repel of Astro, looking to get himself on inside the map. For the time being, he's going to hold the angle. And then as the final push comes towards site, he may look to get himself in there and to push through onto site. But for the time being, it's all about again. opening up this quad wall. We can see the utility going into why that. There's going to be the EMP grenades. Tyrant taking a lot of damage, and that does not bode well for Eminem. Solotov oh, this time is unable to find the opener. It's going to be Mowgli in that direct challenge. One big player versus the other, and it's going to be 
Jamie Walkley, who comes away with a knockout punch. It's going to be five versus four now with Tyrant on very low health as well. The thing is, Tim, Mowgli did that exact push last time they attacked this site. He was in through the window, pushed towards a single doorway, but that time Eminem had someone watching it. What happened this time? Tyrant runs across. No one's watching the doorway and he almost loses his life. Solotov steps across for the swing. He gets taken down as well. For all intents and purposes, they've basically killed off both of the entry players here for Eminem just through doing the exact same thing they did a couple of rounds ago. Eminem simply not remembering, not adapting to it and not dealing with it may have just cost them the round. Very possibly. We're back on the drones. Just Eminem trying to see if they can get... Uh anything any tour hold in this see if they can hold on whilst lfo are just looking for information now they know they've got time they've got man advantage they can use this they can use the drones they can see exactly what's ahead of them tyrant super low health needs to be very careful about his movement inside of statuary there because he's going to get cut down quickly as bibu he just fires in towards clearing the barricade but he's going to look to move up past red stairs most likely and apply a bit Ooh. of pressure from that south side but tyrant using every one of those health those hit points that he's got left to his advantage yeah. there managing to find a kill and level things up 4v4 he takes his eye off the ball for the drone and he's going to miss his opportunity to potentially hit his man rise he manages to find users 4 versus 3 30 seconds I've got a lot of time here to play with but all of these players of Eminem have been boxed in towards Astro like wild animals but Tyrant he's still biting back he's got some teeth on him Tim it's two in the round P4 going in for the plant but Tyrant can't step across here one bullet and he's done keeping himself going until Bibu gets the shutdown diffuser down game likely down for Eminem as well unless Neo can pull off an absolute miracle finds one still two more to go he's got the right idea there's one out towards Master not watching the angle there's one tucked into the oh, no way does he flick on that finds P4's head not the man you'd be killing and now it comes down to these two backline players Shinka terrified for his life has tucked right inside a closet here Neo going in for the defuse Shinka stepping his way forward comes off goes for the swing no way has he found it pulls off the impossible a one versus three for Neo gets the disable we're going all the way to 15. Oh, we! I've got to be honest. Wow. I've got to be honest. And this is nothing against you, Neo. If you hear this, I apologize. But I'd put my glasses back on, Des. <laughs> I had put my glasses back That's on. That's when you know a game's done. Three diffuser down. My glasses were ready. I was, I was coming back. I was ready to throw to a break. That is absolutely unbelievable. Real Neo rocking LFO to their core to the point where they come out with a round 14 tactical timeout. I'm not sure that I've seen the likes before. Uh, <laughs> what a game! What a game! It's had nearly everything. Players on either side popping is, off. Go on. The funny thing is that Medics was complaining about having to pick a top five players. <laughs> Just because of this game, because of all the Solitov 4Ks and we've had the Mowgli 4Ks. Like, he was saying how, you know, he, he said, how am I supposed to pick top five out of this? Well, there's another one to add for you, Medic. <laughs> and I know he's just dying to throw in Nello's one versus one in round, round 12. You know, some creation friendliness there. The boys get on quite well. Chuck his play in there. Why the hell not? But I think Neo's one might be the play that has made this game so far. There has been... By my count, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven multi-kill rounds in this game where they've got at least three <laughs> kills or more. It's just absolutely ridiculous. It has been a bloodbath. It has been scrappy is the best way I can describe it, but entertaining all the way through. If you like your FPS, then, well, you're in the right game. Here we go. Round 15, the last one. Trophy and statuary for LFO is where they are going to set up their last bastion of defense. And let's see what Eminem brings to the party. Apparently, Tim, the answer is even more nades because Nello is moving from her banner, which is played for most of the attacks, onto playing the Maverick instead. So eight frag grenades in back pocket. These boys are dying to play the verticals. They really are, aren't they? They're just looking to get themselves any advantage that they can without having to take those Ooh, gunfights. I love they don't this. want to lose manpower. They just want to get themselves a nice freebie here and there to kick things off and to get things going. Now then, we're going to have a couple of players on the underneath. There's going to be Rise down there, Bibu alongside him. We've seen this previously and they had quite a bit of success. So something that Eminem need to be aware of if they want to get themselves into kitchen and dining, which they're going to have to if they want to put those nades to work, particularly particularly on those vertical angles. Tyrant, he's going to kick his things off. He's got Nello drawn in him in. He's going to be on the Jackal. He's got the scanner equipped so that he can see if there's any footprints. He'll recognize by now that there's not been anybody down in basement, but he's being very cautious. You want Mowgli. 
Mowgli has been the man who's been set up in a side room by himself somewhere, trying to do a bit of work. Here he's crouching at the top of Red Stairs. You know, slowly as the game has gone on, as he's kind of had those three 4K rounds, he has dialed back to playing more around the sides itself. But I feel here the added security of having that jackal and the smokes in back pocket is absolutely what you're looking for. Just, again, playing it kind of the way you should, you know, thinking quite tactically, how can we slow this down and get more control? No. And that's a great way of doing it. They find P4. Tim, is this where the hair starts standing on end? Because it could come to that point where Eminem somehow I'll pull this game back. Eminem fans are sat there now thinking it's happening, it's happening calm down, there is a bit of a way to go for them but let's not forget LFO were 6-3 in the lead, Eminem first of all fighting their way back into overtime, they then went behind 7-6, they fought their way back into it with a 1v3 clutch from Neo and they have still got themselves clung on, they will not be shook off the side of this rock face, no matter what hits them, they are keeping Nope. themselves going we're going to have a direct trade could it be any other pair it's going to be Mowgli it's going to be Solitov they find each other Des this is almost entwined in fate right now Tim they are basically Ewell's new married couple I think we're off the books now officially they've just not left each other alone all game long not just in the entry but also in who can get the most multi-kill rounds it's absolute madness Shinka dug in and Ney coming in at his feet as well just about manages to get away as it wasn't cooked and keeps himself alive at least for another day another one may well follow him here but I think you is expecting a reswing to come in, but Shinka is just dug in deep like a okay, K. Are they below me? Are they going to nade me? Like, what's going on here? I don't feel particularly safe here, guys. Someone help me. I mean, I'm looking pretty good at the minute. They've got bathroom and astro control. They've got the man inside of maps. Bibu has absolutely no idea. He pokes his face into the doorway and it gets taken off by Tyrant. That's going to leave us now in a 4v2. Surely Eminem can lock this down from here. Rise. He's aware there's somebody in maps at the minute. He finds his man. Beautiful shot. Almost no gentle way. as he takes down Tyrant. That's going to be three versus four. Three versus one, though, as Neon nah, manages to find Shinka. And surely this is all over. Rise. He's going to have to make it a 4k on the round if he wants to do anything for LF. Four, they're able to get in. Nello, he's putting the diffuser down oh! on the ground. Surely he sticks it. He doesn't have time as users finds the final kill. <sighs> and somehow, from me putting my glasses on, thinking Eminem were beaten, I put them on, seeing that they've won. Oh, so many clutch moments. Nello's 1v1, the 1v3 from Neo. Oh, that that game just epitomizes my frustrations with LFO and back when they were known as Fatality, that team for all of last year as well. A game where it looks like they are so in control and should be winning, they just lose. It falls by the wayside. It collapses around them. And you know what? Fair play to Eminem. That has got some real character in it to swing all the way back. When you've been battered four rounds in a row, you look to be out of the game and you still fight your way back in. It's absolutely beautiful. What a matchup that was. Honestly, that Ooh. is potentially one of the games of the stage. We've seen some belters. Rogue's come back against BDS sticks in my mind particularly, but that one is definitely up there with them. The fact that LFO had that a 3v1 on map point and still lost. And then it comes back to bite them in a 3v1 in the next round as well. It just... It's beautiful. It's poetic almost. Again, if you like your frags, that's a game to watch back for you because we saw them every single round. Definitely not as clean as it could have been, but a win is a win. It's two points for Eminem and just the one for LFO. Let's go to a quick break. When we come back, the desk will break that one down for you.